you know, you were talking about the, <coughs> that a lot of people did get the male aspect of it. But there was also the fact that um, the women present in the novel, you know, they exist, of course, they play an important role. They motivate, they, they, uh, they link up causally, causally with a lot of stuff that's going on. But that also makes them exist in the context of men. Hmm. Yeah. Are you is is that because you wanted to fix a focus on what you was you were you know essentially if you were talking about male rage and male dynamics it was a focus point and you you know you left that marginal or are you uncomfortable writing yeah see there are two things here one is that now the two central characters of the novel are male but most I mean most of what they are doing is for the women in the novel, okay. So in that sense, uh, uh, to me, it is uh, the, the 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 female presence is always there in the novel. But it is in the context of men. It is through them. I would say it is from the male point of view. Okay, it is like uh, <coughs> you're, you're you're observing. Okay, it's like men are observing women. Okay, all the time. You know, um, which to me is not subordinate. Okay, to uh, the male characterization. Okay, I would look at these two things as see without what they are observing, there is no characterization at all in the novel of the men. You will not understand if you take off everything which relates to the women in the novel. You will not understand the men. You know, in the novel, they will have uh, just uh, one dimension. What gives them the character and the credibility? Okay, is the way they are looking at the women. Sometimes with malice, sometimes with love, mostly with love, you know, and uh, uh, they are not able to resist them. Even Ayan Man, okay, where he says that um, uh, my my home is not as trivial as the world, you know, because his home matters most to him. And he also says that a person like Ayan Man, he says that uh, there should not be too much rationality between husband and wife, you know. He, he would be practical outside his home, but he doesn't want to be practical, you know, with his wife. Yes, in scenes like this, it is through Iron Man's point of view. Now, there is a technical issue also here because my first draft on the novel, I wrote it like a journalist, as a feature writer, you know. So, uh, I don't know how many times I've said this, I'm ashamed to say it, but then it, is, it, such, it was such a shock to me when I realized. I, my first draft was a giant book review, you know, and it was so, it broke my heart. I thought, I have to abandon this. Already, I was when I was 21, I had written on half a novel and I abandoned it because I thought it was too much. And it... And then I was afraid, maybe I have not got it right, you know. But fortunately, on on my own, I was just asking myself, what is wrong? Because I never used to read literary theory. And then I discovered a very simple aspect of novel writing, which is the character's point of view, you know. What adds depth to your novel, okay, is that... Uh, uh, what makes a character a character, okay, is the point of view of the character. Now, why I found it beautiful was... The, the, why I find the re realization beautiful was that as a journalist you have a convenient boundary which is facts you know if there is a if there is a fog you write there is a fog but if there is no fog if you try to you know add a bit of color you're cheating even if nobody finds out it's cheating you can't do that so when a journalist begins to write a novel okay I think uh, the problem is that you want a boundary in a way otherwise you can write anything you know so I realized characterize, uh, characterization would lend me with the boundary. The boundary is that a character would do a set of things and will not do a set of things. Iron you know? Money will never wonder if time moves, you know, <clears throat> like a straight line, okay, or like a dotted line. Okay, he would never wonder. You know, only Arvind Acharya will wonder. So that gave me a certain boundary. I'm used to writing within a certain boundary. You know? uh, because I didn't like, I don't like magic, and I don't, I like. To me, writing is logic. You know, if there is no logic, then there's something wrong with, uh, uh, you know, writing. All metaphors are beautiful because they are logical. You know? um, so, so <clears throat> now writing from a woman's point of view. It's very tricky, actually, you know, because as it is writing a novel, even for people who are good at writing a novel, it's a, it's a difficult thing, you know. 
Now, Oparna, I manage because uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, most of my friends are women. You know, I get along better with women than, than with men. You know. So I would always listen to a lot of things that they keep telling me, which is very funny and amusing to me, you know. Um, so, I, uh, Oparna's character was a composite of many things. I know that, I, see, that's another thing, the literary <clears throat> conjecture, you know, so you can have so much, ana so much data, so much information, but ultimately what is important for a writer is the conjecture that you make, is the guess, you know. With Oparna, I was confident. With Oja, Ayan Mani's wife, she would be some, <clears throat> a person who is a bit like your maid. Okay, I have no idea what goes on in their head. You know, I don't have information to make a conjecture. You know, I have very minimal guesses I can make, chiefly from their cleanliness and some of the things that they've said. Details I have in the sense that see, I I have been to the BDD shawls for a long time. You know, but conversations the kind of conversations I've had with men is <coughs> very different from the kind of conversations I could have with women. You know, it's hardly you know they don't talk. <coughs> <clears throat> so that was a technical problem, you know, Operna I could manage. So that is the reason why the point of view, okay, and also not only that, see, even, even superb writers like say uh, uh, Anne Tyler, who's an American writer, you know, there are not many people who have read her in India, she's a Pulitzer Prize winning American writer. Uh, she once wrote a novel okay, from the male point of view. Okay. Which, for, by her standards, okay, to me was deeply flawed, okay, because she was writing, okay, from the point of view of a man as a woman would think a man is thinking, okay. Like for example, a guy is really interested in a girl, okay. Her view is so sen sensitive, you know, and so delicate, you know. There is hardly any sex in it, you know, for the first 50 pages. Which is absurd, okay? You know, there are, you know, there is a way in which men look, you know, even in women with affection, you know. So then I always realize that, see, there is a, you know, it is, it is a lesson which I think. There is in fact an anthology called Imagining the Other, hmm. which has 50% of the stories of men writing from a female huh. perspective. Huh. And I forget the name, but hmm. it's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. All of it is the entire. I think it happens even in Namesake, yeah. okay, Jumpalayri's yeah. book, where she's, a, she's, a, she's a very good, very efficient writer. But the male point of view is, as I was telling, you see, when a guy starts observing upholstery, yeah, I, yeah. it's a generalization. You know, I know that there are some guys who would definitely know the color of the curtains. I'm not denying it. But you, you know, I find it hard to get into a character who's so, you know, observant of these these details. Yeah. Which is interesting because, in a sense, again, a generalization. What you're saying is that a male novel, hmm. a, a male writer's novel, will always be a male novel. Female writers, you and I, I, I think I, I agree with you. I mean, it may not have occurred to me so clearly before, but never. And I love Jumpa's writing. Yes. But never can I forget that I'm re reading a woman writer. Yes. Even you as can't. a woman. Yes. And even though I, I, I think I, so. I, yeah. See, men and men and women are two different species, you know, almost, you know, and uh, they're they're very different. Uh, they they look at the world very differently, and uh, sometimes that is a challenge. I love the female poet like from a second book. You know, the, the, in fact, if it works out the way I want to, nobody would even uh, ever question me on, uh, on the female presence in the novel, you know. But I have to be very careful, okay, because it's, uh, because here's pure conjecture, you have data, you know. These are people I know very well, okay. But still, if you're wrong with your conjecture, okay, your readers are going to find out, okay, and they're going to say no. Okay, this is not credible. Okay, I, this is not convincing. Okay, I don't feel this is real. I feel I'm reading a novel. The moment a reader feels that, then it's gone. You know, the whole illusion is collapsed, and your 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 novel is destroyed. You know. <laughs> you know? It's one thing to say that okay, the women characters were not sketched out, or, yes. you know, you're not etched out. 
But you, I've also read a couple of, well, maybe uh, one or two um, pieces about your novel, which say that it is sexist in many yeah, ways. Yeah, I've read which, them too. Which, yeah. Uh, which say we talk about the fact that women are sex objects, yes. the, the disabled appearance of the activists, yeah. the, 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 the references to menopause and hmm. menstrual cycles. Hmm. How do you react to that? I mean, is that is that something that that took you by surprise? And yeah, it did. Uh, think or were you? Like this is absurd. I mean, how, how do you how do you? No, I mean, uh, see this. Also, sorry, this the, what connect? What what I'm really also asking is yes. that why? What do you make of criticism that uh, uh, that 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 uh, seeks political correctness in literature? Yeah, which is a uh, a disgusting aspect of literary criticism. Very honestly, you know, uh, where see political correctness. Is not a form of sophistication. You know, I never accept it that way. It's a form of cowardice. Okay, um, there are a few things that have to be said, and writers, essentially more than anything, they should have the courage. Also, it doesn't lend itself to complexity, which, which in exactly, you know, exactly, you know. Now, <clears throat> if what you're saying is diabolic, evil, and inhuman, you will be punished as a writer okay because human beings are most preoccupied with humanity okay and and human nature you know and if you it is an evolutionary force in all of us to be good you know so if you are trying to say something okay which is uh, deliberately inflammatory and more importantly inaccurate okay <clears throat> You will be punished. Okay, for example, if some guy wants to say, okay, the Dalits have a genetic condition, that's the way they the way they are, that person will be deservedly punished. Okay, because nobody is going to buy the argument anymore. Okay, so you're wrong. But in terms of gender, okay, uh, there have been two kinds of female reviews. Okay, just like it's a male book. Okay, and it's very interesting. The kind of things that male writers pick, and what female reviewers pick. Sorry, male reviewers pick and female reviewers. Pick. There have been some reviewers with uh, who have uh, humor, okay, some element of humor where they can take a joke, okay. Uh, and there are some who uh, I don't know what it is. It is a uh, uh, sometimes I feel it is. Uh, you know, everybody talks about the writer, nobody talks about the psychiatric condition of the reader. It is as important as, uh, the, uh, as the psychiatric condition of the writer. You know? Sometimes when we say this book is great, we are also complimenting ourselves, saying that we the people of the world at this moment in time are mature enough to appreciate a book which is generally good. Okay. And when uh, a book which is which you don't like okay, becomes a hit, okay, you are also condemning the people of their times that they are elevating a substandard book, okay, and it is a commentary on the times. Okay, these are dumb times. That dumb books are doing well, right? So, so every time we are talking about book, we are also talking about ourselves. You know? So the way when I look at some of the some of the reviews, so one there were one or two very intelligent reviews, good reviews, okay, where. Uh, I was, uh, uh, I think the misogyny, you know, uh, word crept in, you know. You've been getting that a lot. Okay, it was very funny actually and my American publisher even sent me a line, oh, does she hate you, you know, for one of the reviewers, you know. Uh, this person, hey, because see, that's another thing, they, they never looked, see, and see, I, I'll tell you another funny fact, see, today, if you have antagonized women, okay, you cannot it's very, I mean, it's very difficult to be published yeah. because women run the publishing world. Yes. Okay. The, when you send your novel, who's reading it? Nine out of ten times, it's a woman who's reading it. Okay. It is not a coincidence that Kartika of Harper Collins is a woman. Okay. My agent in England is a woman. My American publisher is a woman. Okay. My British publisher is a male, but then the editor who's who worked, I mean, who was looking at the novel was a woman. Okay. Nine out of ten people in in publishing. Okay, are uh, women, okay, and if this novel was anything close to what some of the female reviewers, you know, yeah. were kind of very serious women, I think, you know, uh, said it was, you know, they would like it because, and also, who are the readers? Okay, without, I mean, as I mean, uh, Ian McKeevan, 
you know, if uh, the, the day women stop reading novels, the novel would be dead. And he's correct. Yes. You know, even novelists like me, you know, I read non, I read more non-fiction than novels. So, I think it's an unfair. You see, I can understand. See, and, and it, this is one matter. And now the second thing is there will there'll be some elements in a novel which will offend you. Okay, I can take that. I can I can accept it since see I found this part offensive. Okay, and I would say I had to say it. I think you're right in being offended by it. Okay, I can I can take that. You know, because sometimes when you make a point, okay, some people will be offended, which is fine, which is not the same as attributing a larger serious charge. Okay, on a writer. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think the. I think the disconnect happens because mm. when you're a critic, as a critic, you might enjoy as a film critic or mm. as a as a book critic, you could enjoy something, thoroughly, yes. but then you feel a certain responsibility. Yes. Um, when you read something that offends you, yes. you point that out. Yes. You know, part of it, for women might be a historical insecurity, mm. which makes them feel that everything is out to displace them. Mm. You know, take away their place in the world. Mm. Uh, but you also feel that sense of responsibility. No, see, that's what here is where I would. Yeah, sorry, go. Yeah. No, but my 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 thing is that um, uh, this relates to two things. One is that maybe we are overestimating the power of. I mean, yeah, sure, one should not perpetrate uh, uh, stereotypes that, that can cause harm, but maybe we're overestimating the power of fiction, and the power of fiction is lies somewhere else. It hmm. lies in, 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 the, in, when you read good, powerful fiction, it emotionally impacts hmm. you. You know, it's, it doesn't politically impact you yeah. as much. I, I can't, I, I wouldn't buy that if someone, ro you know, read a novel and then, you know, whatever, started voting the BJP or, hmm. you know, started beating up. It, it, what it does to you is personal, invariably, yes. a good novel. So that's that's why it's so, so it's a misinterpretation of the, where the power of the novel is. Yes. The other thing is also that maybe criticism can accommodate both. Hmm. Maybe criticism can say that you know what it's politically incorrect in this 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 way, but it is a great novel. It's a yes. great piece of writing. It's thoroughly engaging. Yes. And I I enjoyed it. And if they could, if one could, as a reviewer, let go of the insecurity and say, you know what, I had a great time. Yes. Uh, without worrying about the peer group, and also links up to the peer group you belong to. Yes. See, that is a that is the whole point. Yeah. Okay. See, there is a lot of. Uh, see, I am a beneficiary of uh, some good reviews, which pointed out that maybe uh, he's making fun of women here and there. You know. But the peer, see, that's why that's why I say political correctness is a form of cowardice. Okay, where they do not want to embarrass themselves. Okay, in front of uh, their lady friends, you know, who might have had very and strong opinions. Who their lady friends exactly. Are. You know, Sorry, I'll, I'll, there was a point when I'd written a uh, very senior theatre critic, hmm. uh, very very senior hmm. theatre critic woman, and uh, she and me had written the same review, and she's always really taken to my reviews and really sort of patronised me. And she called this play an out and out uh, misogynist play, and I love the play, hmm. you know. And I went up to her and I said, I cannot, you know, I cannot believe the discrepancy of what, what we're, we're saying. And she said, you know, you won't get it. And I, I kept challenging her. I said, what is wrong with you? Now, why can't you take a joke? And she said, you know, you won't get it. We fought for everything you've been enjoying. You know? Which is rubbish, you know. Which is another Maybe, thing I'll. But, I'll but, but the point was that that was her group, you know, the yeah. the women that she hung out with, or who were her, you know, for them it would have been a big deal if she had not said that. Hmm. But the women I hang out with enjoyed the play. Yes, much. exactly. You know, we, we were not, exactly. Uh, uh, we, we, we did exactly. Not, nothing there made, made us insecure yes. about who we yes. are, or our place in the world. See, that that's what I mean by the power of women in literature, you know. See now and. Novels, some, no, so there would be some novels which become victims, okay, of the many preconceptions, you know, preconceptions that reviewers have, you know, sometimes which is. So though, I mean, I, I see. I, I have to. I mean, the reason why I keep repeating this that I have been a beneficiary is that generally people have been very, uh, uh, very. They've been. They've, they've said many nice things about the novel, you know, and, and in fact. I have nothing to complain at all, you know. Yeah, but, but there are some views. Nice is, nice is one thing, and actually, people getting the novel and understanding. Have you got a lot of that? As yes, well? yes, absolutely. That's you know, great, absolutely. You know, and uh, some of them who were offended. I mean, uh, sometimes the quality of the person who you offended becomes a compliment to you. You know, you know so that all those things keep happening. So it's quite. Uh, 
it's quite interesting. That's it. You know, one thing that we spoke about earlier was um, you know, you were talking about how it's a comment when you like a novel, you also like the writer, you know, mm. some aspects yes. of the writer. It's, it's become a trend now yes. to, that the first book, fiction, non-fiction, is deeply autobiographical. It's mm. either about your family, huh. your grandmother, or, you know, whatever, the, whatever you grew up in, fiction, mm. non-fiction, whatever. This is not that yeah, novel, not, yeah. you know. How much of it is in you? In which ways do you, are you part of it? Is your life a part? Of course, I mean, it's, it's come from your mind and it's yeah. So I, come from, I come from a from a middle class family in Madras, so uh, there was a time when I would uh, uh, really look at the affluent and have uh, you know my own kind of rage when I was an adolescent. You know, you form unnecessary opinions about them, thinking that they're unattainable. You know, so that rage was never. <clears throat> it I didn't have to theorize that rage. You know, once I knew it was happening with others. You know, I could really fully understand that conjecture part, you know, was easy for me, okay, somewhat easier because I, I, I too went through a phase where, you know, <clears throat> uh, oh, everybody is going to the US to study and, you know, uh, I have to, you know, go to you know, Loyola College or whatever, you know, just because. So those kind of things, you know, the grumblings. <coughs> but just that, you know, band, uh, some elements of thought, you know, I all my beliefs. Yeah, I, I, uh, when I came to Bombay. even if you didn't stay in a chawl, you would have used the chawl in, in, in the book. I would have maybe researched it more. Yeah. You know, I would have, uh, I would have spent, uh, say, a uh, few months, yeah. you know, trying to fully understand. But for two and a half years of my life in Bombay, I lived in a chawl, so in a way, I kind of understood a lot of uh, yeah. elements. Though, though, when I see a character uh, who whose characterization as in the context of a chawl is way superior to the characterization in serious men, you know. Because serious men's purpose was also different. It was not about chawls. It's not about the geography of the mob. In fact, it's not even a Bombay novel in a way, you know. It's just a setting. It was about the minds of two men, you know, and what they want, right. But I'm, like, for example, I was watching uh, Dobi a few few days ago, and there is a character, okay, from the chawl. You know, that characterization. I envy film medium sometime, or it, maybe it does just brilliant work, you know. No, I could have never got that depth, you know, of chawl characterization in a novel. I don't know if it is because of my own feeling, you know, mm. or because I, the novel just can't compete with a film when it, come to, when it comes to characterization, you know, a particular kind of character. It's just a self-centered nature of, I think, uh, it's a vanity maybe of a writer that you're watching someone else's film yeah. and the, you're thinking of your book, you know, you're connecting everything to, yeah, I suppose, yeah. yeah. I think maybe it's just a form of love, I think. Yeah, yeah also, I mean, yeah. I, we all watch films and read books to yes. what we have and what, yes. you know, what we can relate to. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a quote that you, uh, that you use um, somewhere and I'll, I'll make this my, oh, there's one more question. Uh, you know that that you think I know the reason why you use that thing that uh, that he attributes quotes to people. Yes. Ayan, you know, but uh, the Rashi thing is very amazing. Where hmm. do you come up with that idea? I believe that myself. <laughs> why did you attribute it to Rashi? <coughs> Because, uh, actually, in a way, it is something Rashi would never say, you <laughs> yeah. know. But see, this iron money, right? Iron money cannot be talking about Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Sure. Okay, he can't be talking about Ann Tyler or Alice Munro, you know. Who is the writer Ayn Mani would have heard of? It's Salman Rushdie, because everybody knows Salman Rushdie, you know. So he had to attribute it to people who he knows. See, Salman Rushdie, he uses Newton, he uses Valampari John, but that's, you know, this, yeah. all the, <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe North Indians wouldn't have heard of him. It's just, you know, a yeah. twist. So that's why, you know, because, but though it is, it is a, it's a statement Salman Rushdie would not make because he himself is uh, a, an English speaking person who interprets India, you know, so he is very much a character in that court, you know, um, so that's why. I Naipaul could have said something like that. I, was, I thought about it, you know, it's exactly the kind of thing Naipaul would say, yeah. but I thought actually very hard about it. Would Ayn Mani know Naipaul? 
See, I had to be very careful because, uh, see, if, if you no, look I at it, I think you're right. I don't think you would have. May not have. You know, though Naipaul loves Ambedkar, I, I believe Naipaul loves Ambedkar and, you know, he has very clinical views, which I think Dalit intellectuals would like, would think, yes, yeah. exactly, you know. Uh, but um, I had to be careful. See, if you notice, Ayan Mani is intelligent. Every, in fact, everybody says Ayan Mani is intelligent. In fact, some of I mean, some of our Indians are so casters, okay, not realizing that it's coming out. They're saying, how can he be so intelligent? It's mm -hmm. flawed. See, that is, see, that's... Now, the point is, Ayan Mani is intelligent, if you notice very carefully, only when he's thinking. When Ayan Mani speaks, okay, he speaks either because he's deceptive, he wants to appear to the scientists as if he's this, mm. you know, servile, small guy, okay? Or there is no cutting piece of wisdom usually, I mean, yeah. you know? <clears throat> he, he, may, he may feel a bit intellectually superior when he's speaking to his wife, mm. okay? But he never gives his cutting lines to Oparna or others who are socially mm. above him. Ayan Mani's intelligence is the intelligence which occurs inside all our heads, you know? It's, it happens to us all the time. Mm -hmm. The problem always is articulation. You know? yes. it, is, it is there that most of us kind of a bit restrained. Mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, but at the same time, there are a lot of things Ayan Mani does not know. Mm -hmm. you know? And he just can't be quoting Naipaul and others. No, even if, I mean, I, I, this is what I, I feel. Even if he knew of Naipaul, I don't think he would think that he would have the same kind of power like if he wanted to make a exactly. quote powerful i think hmm. he would he put would salman rushdie yeah, yeah. So I, I agree with yeah. you know you say um, uh, uh, some, uh, somewhere that morality is predominantly a female point of view articulated by men uh, hmm. who do not uh, uh, know what they're talking about that you know that's, that's what you say but my uh, is morality something that interests you as a subject i mean is yes, that something that is. you um, wanted to explore with this novel um, and uh, you know is, is that something that fascinates you and, and no, what are see, the morality interests me a lot uh, uh, <clears throat> but not as a literary element I find morality too naive uh, to be a subject of for literature but perhaps a theme mm -hmm. <clears throat> no morality is 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 what is is it is what makes characters you know the change the change in the levels of morality, okay, is exactly what makes all of us different, okay. It's what is responsible for the various things that we do and say and everything, you know. So morality is a much larger thing. It's a. So uh, for you, it's a tool to shape your characters, and you know, to. to I uh, also I'm quite fascinated by it. You know, I also I I also think there are a lot of things which in this world which are female, and a lot of things are male, you know. I always, I can't help it, you know, sometimes even when women are doing something, automatically I get the feeling that it's male. Sometimes even the act of typing on the keyboard, I feel it's very female, you know. Yeah. When yeah. would I as a man yeah. ever use my little finger, you know. Yeah. It's the most inconsequential thing, okay, in a, in a guy. You but have that. Yeah, 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 you know, some, sometimes I feel it's a very feminine thing, you know, even if it's a guy. I think even objects. I mean, yes, uh, yes. I mean, Hindi of course does that as a yes. language where there is a gender to every single thing. Yes. But I mean, I don't know if for me as a Hindi speaking person that happens or it happens to everybody in general, but there is, you feel certain objects are male and certain objects are yes. female. I mean, there's no saying why. Exactly, you know, so in that, it is in that context that I feel mora there is something very feminine about morality but as a concept. It might also be because morality is something that women can use to protect themselves, you know. I, I think generally a lot of women feel powerless uh, until they can take recourse to morality uh, and, and uh, fall back on morality to sort of. Um, make sure, get men, you know, hope that men will do the right thing. Probably. You know, um, I think that's, that's a huge power. Yeah, but then again, why should men uh, succumb to that? It is not in their interest. It is not in their interest, yes. but, you know, fortunately there is... You know, no, religion, but I think so there's larger to that. Yeah, maybe maybe it is a it is a part of a larger force. Yeah, you know, yeah. uh, I think that's why I used the word. It's an evolutionary force. Yeah. yeah, actually, that's another thing. That's another thing. That when we talk about strength, the kind of strength you attribute to women is perhaps more also. But that's a different strain of morality. And morality is also many different things. Yeah, it's many different things. It's very moral um, strength. Yeah, yes. I agree with you there. That that's the kind of strength you would attribute more to women. I'm not, I'm not saying again, not a generalization. Yes. Right? Yeah. Or sometimes we just give names to just the way we are, you know, it's very convenient, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, the, the constant need 
to name things. To name things and then reject yeah. the, the name. Yeah. What yeah. It'll be interesting if, if people research uh, <clears throat> how many concepts actually do not exist, but they exist only because they appear to exist only because they have been given names. You know? Yes. Like this rubbish called multitasking. You know, to me it's total rubbish. You know, people always could do a few things at one time. You know, it is nothing. It's just someone just named it. You know, and it is total rubbish. And I think new age phenomena are the full of are full of things which do not exist, but they've been given names. Yeah. You know, yeah. even things like. Uh, 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 Digital empowerment. There is a particular word for it. It's hilarious. Sorry, I'm just yeah. I can't. No, but I think this links back to where we were talking about in the beginning with criticism. I think the biggest. Uh, Sorry, digital divide. Digital divide. It is the most moronic concept. Okay, that that the poor are different from the rich. Okay, N can be expressed through far more meaningful concepts. Okay, than ownership of computers. Digital divide is it's an alliteration. You know, it sounds you know as some something which is uh, interesting and important, but it is meaningless. But then the, these words are also these phrases, the words are also very dangerous because they they, uh, they the create theories, policies. Yeah, they create policies. policies. And grow around Even them. Bill Gates started saying at one point, "What's wrong with you? Why are you giving computers to farmers? Why don't you give them electricity first? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know." Yeah. <clears throat> No, yeah, and uh, it also links back to the criticism point that we yes. were talking about. Because I think the biggest impediment yes. uh, in, a, in a critic reading a book honestly yes. is all the terms that instantly yes. uh, rush into the mind. Yeah. And the need to define the book takes over. Yes. You know, quickly. Yes. Uh, and, and then you feel like if you can't define the book, then you can't understand it. Which yes. is a very, yes. uh, uh, you know, unnerving feeling. Yes. You know, so you don't give in to a novel and say, you know what, I'll just read it. Like, yeah. Like I, you know, I think that's also... Yeah. A, a Sometimes when I'm reading a review, I wait for the word dystopic or dystopia, you know. I think uh, two out of five no, uh, reviews, <laughs> at least in <laughs> India, they have that word. Really? Uh, yeah, I think it'll be quite interesting to find uh, how many reviews actually. No, I mean, use there are a lot of words that I know that yes, constantly, constantly appear all yeah, the time. Yeah. 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 Dystopia, I'll, I'll look at. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's Great, great. I had a good time.